Wow, she was like, that's, that, that's interesting. And I'm like, that's for you. She's like, oh, <laughs> so that makes more sense. Sit down. Uh, so thanks for booking this and understanding. Um, Stay. You know, with policy and just safety, obviously, with staff. Because um, I think, uh, so after we talked, she came like the next day or something, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I think Nate came out mm -hmm. uh, for her. And mm -hmm. then she had a, a episode. Nate's there, the, like, younger, right? the younger. The little guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and I yeah. pulled him, yeah. Okay. It's something, I don't know, well, she shouldn't be doing it, yeah. Yes. We'll talk about why, reasons why, so you understand where Sophia is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, when we deal with behavior stuff, it's uh, people see the problem, mm -hmm. and they tend to focus on the problem, but we have to understand what's the source of the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really what the issue yep. is, okay? Uh, and then, obviously, we want to address that, because that's what, uh, everything else that you're seeing is the symptom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like uh, leash reactivity, lunging and barking, I deal with that stuff all the time. People are like, oh, I need my dog to stop barking at dogs and that. I'm like, well, your dog is scared of everything. Mm -hmm. Or I'm like, your dog is super anxious and all that stuff. I'm like, that's actually why the problems are happening. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times people will go, oh, my dog's an asshole. And sometimes they are, but they're <laughs> like, oh, you know, like they just blame the dog yeah, for being no. bad. Yeah. I go, no, I'm no. Like, your dog is not doing well in the world because of these root issues that are, that are there. Mm -hmm. And then they're using these responses to essentially protect themselves or keep harm away. Yeah. Does that yeah. make sense? For sure, for sure. So, um, fill me in on Sophia, her past, um, the things you're dealing with, so on and so forth. Uh, as far as the past, obviously she's a rescue. Uh -huh. um, the things we're dealing with right now, obviously the lunging. Um, she doesn't play well with other dogs. So I've been kind of isolated. Mm -hmm. When we first got her, she wasn't very good with humans or anyone. We okay. kind of interacted like a little more humans in it, a little more involved. So now she doesn't lunge at at people so much uh -huh. as much as she used to. I uh, see. Sure. She she did get some training previously. I think my wife mentioned yes. it. Yeah. Um, but where we're at now, we just want her to be comfortable around everything and not be so anxious. Because, this yeah. particular collar was that the recommendation of the previous place? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. When we adopted her, she was already one and a half. What we were told is that. She was an outside dog. She had no socialization. Sure. She didn't yeah. know her name. Yeah. The owner gave her up because I think she started getting aggressive with yeah. him. With him, okay. Yeah. When we first got her, she wouldn't even come inside the house. She wouldn't be comfortable. Okay. She didn't know how to act. She yeah. didn't know her place. Yeah. She just cowered down. Thankfully, she's always been really good with him and I, but yeah. anyone outside of us. For sure. Not yeah. um, uh, th th I was gonna say, um, when people come over, uh, what does that look like? You got a crater because she loses crater, her mind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A crater and put it in a different room and put a towel over or a blanket over the cage just so kind of helps her just chill a little bit. How is she, does she still trigger? Like she's still barking and stuff or is she just uh, More panting than barking. Okay. More anxiety. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The anxiety. Anxiety, yes. I gotcha. Uh, uh, with the lunging at people, uh, before training, was it like you were walking her and then you would just see a lunge? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. she started pulling. Okay. Yeah. Now it's more where if you're walking this way, this way, I just give her the good nug tuck. She knows not to do. Yeah, yeah. What about dogs? If she sees dogs in passing? She's reactive. Okay. She's reactive. Okay. But mm -hmm. it's more like if it's a chill dog, yeah. she's like, I'm chill. Yeah. If that dog barks at her or uh -huh. does this, then she like Blows up. takes or, it or to starts, another or level. Or starts pulling the owner, one of those little but side she, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But she She'll, obsesses watches, yeah, like she sure. fixates. Yeah, she see. does fixate. Squirrels, dogs, um, cats. And when she fixates, like it's hard to get her attention. Yeah. Um, at what age did you get her? Like You're about a, one and a half. Yes. Okay. And then the previous owner had her since a pup? We I'm don't know. We probably so. assume so. Just know that she was we outside. Had, yeah. We had a few details on her paperwork yeah. when we got I, her. It does. I will say that I know she was hit before. Okay. Because I was sweeping the front deck mm -hmm. a couple years ago when we got her. And when I grabbed the broom, she cowered down. Mm -hmm. So, but put, you know. It's possible. Uh, that's a very common thing that I hear where uh, uh, clients will say like, oh, like I know my dog was hit with the newspaper before or they're hit with a broom or a mop because when I pick it up, they cower. Uh -huh. And I was like, I've seen puppies at two months old do the same thing. Okay. So it's possible, Yeah. right? Especially like, I, I would kind of go, it's possible because uh, if the dog, if she started going after the previous owner and the owner probably got took it personally, that's, I could see that happening. Right. But uh, it's a very common thing in dog training where if we get a dog that is rescued almost you would be surprised how often people just insinuate or assume abuse in the past yeah mm. you know yeah 
And regardless if there was, like I had a case that was a Doberman. Um, her name was Princess. She had uh, visible stab wounds and bullet holes. Oh, so geez. she was clearly abused, mm. right? And became the sweetest dog. Like the guy, like I trained her like back in like 2017, 2018. Yeah. And the guy still sends me texts of her and all that was stuff. Was she aggressive before? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so when it comes to behavior, just as an like FYI, even if a dog does come from an abusive past, uh, it doesn't mean uh, the abuse made the dog aggressive. For sure. Right. For okay. Sure. Uh, so uh, one way that we look at it is if we have an unstable dog and you have them in an unstable environment, you get a very unstable dog, mm -hmm. right? Move that dog into a stable environment. They're still unstable, but they're better, right? Because at root, they are just an unstable dog. If you take a stable dog, unstable environment, they become unstable. You remove them, stable environment, put them in a stable environment, they go back to stability, okay? Yeah. So um, that's like one of the most common things that we see is that, um, you know, when dogs are rescued, uh, the humans put these kind of uh, pasts on them, but then it creates a guilt. And then it just kind of creates the cycle mm -hmm. <coughs> where the human is like, babying or coddling, mm -hmm. uh, trying to give the dog the best life. Feeling because, sorry for yeah. it. Yeah. And it actually uh, makes things worse. Yeah, it just promotes that kind of behavior. I think yeah. is it important to say that she will bite. So like my husband had an incident with this man in our neighborhood who's um, a bit cognitively disabled uh -huh. and he wasn't understanding not to come close to sure. her. And he kept coming close, and my husband was trying to back off, and she she did bite him. Was it like a, like punctures, or was it like a graze? It wasn't a puncture. It was a graze. It was like a little just. She just got him. Yeah, she I got, got him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And okay. another incident was, it was just me and her sitting on a bench watching, just looking at the lake. And this lady came up out of nowhere. She just started, I didn't see her approach usually, but she just came out, and she was like, oh, how's it going, blah, blah, blah. And then, I said, man, please stay back, please stay back. She went to lunge. Yeah. I got in the way, and she ended up like biting me a little bit, but yeah. she was lunging toward her. Would you say when, when you body blocked, right, mm -hmm. did she have the capacity to do like a full-on bite? No, as soon as she saw, I think as soon as she saw, saw that you. it was me, she stopped and looked at me, she froze. Okay. I gotcha, yeah. I gotcha. Okay, because I know we did have, um, I think now in total. Nope. There's been four incidents with us, with mm. the, including the last one. Uh -huh. On one of them, because uh, I believe she was unmuzzled, she did get Corey. Uh, right? Pulled, like, yeah, 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 yeah. like I think, um, yeah, yeah, tore she his, his shirt. Tore yeah, yeah, yeah. his clothes or something. Yeah. So when we look at these things, um, one thing I look at is uh, dogs are really good about depth perception, mm -hmm. is that if there is full intention to bite, like, you're gonna get bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So like for Corey, uh, I'd have to re-review it, but I looked at it and I was like, she had the capacity to do more, I felt. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead she, even though it was a serious attempt, mm -hmm. uh, it was a warning, mm -hmm. like, don't come into our space. Yeah. Does that make sense? For yes. sure. For so sure. When I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause when I evaluate stuff, uh, especially when there's dog bites, uh, people tend to over exacerbate things. Mm -hmm. So like it could be the slightest graze mm -hmm. and like, oh my God, my dog is human aggressive. This I'm gonna have to put them down. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, your dog down. had full opportunity to do a bite and they mm -hmm. didn't. You yeah, know? they held back. Yes, I was like, I have uh, clients with like kids and the dog bit the kid in the face mm -hmm. um, and it was a bruise. You know, and the kid was right in the dog's space. And I was like, that is a correctional bite. Mm -hmm. uh, your dog had full capacity to just maul this kid and did not. That's good. Yeah. That tells me the dog is is regulating, right? Because mm -hmm. we get dogs that you give them the tiniest opportunity and they mm -hmm. just go mm -hmm. full on. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I always have to assess things, even if there are bites or multiple bites, they all give me information. Yeah. And I tell people it sucks, right? But the but it's good because again, it's regulated. Uh, 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 it's it's not to the degree that they're thinking it is. For sure. People think 10, I'm like, that's a one. Yeah. They're like, really? I'm like, do you want me to show you a 10? Because I can show <laughs> you yeah. a 10. Yeah, like I got it's boom. kind of between a slap and a punch. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly, right? Oh. So all that stuff tells me stuff about the dog. So um, it's possible, because we have nature versus nurture. I'm sure you guys have heard of that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Is if she was kept in the yard all the time, um, just not knowing how to interact, uh, most likely uh, kicking into instinct the majority of the time, mm -hmm. right? Even if she's tethered and stuff, like now the dog's got um, nowhere to go, right? Mm -hmm. Is they're technically vulnerable. Mm -hmm. right. So then instinct kicks in. So if she lived like that, 
let's say the first year of her life yeah. and like you said you brought her inside and she did not know what to do like yeah. i've seen this before right mm -hmm. it all makes sense yeah. okay mm -hmm. so that to me is kind of like a, a nurture thing right they kept the dog isolated yeah and dog didn't know how to interact mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Relying uh, most likely on instinct and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, keeping a dog in a yard, uh, territorial instinct is heightened, mm -hmm. right? Because they view it as a kind of little property there. Right. Yeah. Uh, so if she's practicing that night and day, and then you try to bring that dog inside, like it's it, it's just so she becomes opposite. like very territorial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because the 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 incidents with her are when staff are coming into her space. That's territorial, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you want to think of yourself here as like a little moving territory if you will like your yeah. little island right right mm -hmm. so if, if anybody gets too close or into that space she's going to view it as threatening mm -hmm. she's going to behave accordingly yeah. okay um the anxiety that you said she feels when guests come over right and then uh, i think you mentioned something about uh initially when bringing her from outside to inside how she was cowering mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like that is also fueling mm -hmm. the territorial behavior yeah. and those uh behaviors are not confident behaviors so now you have a territorial dog who's fearful, anxious, yeah. right? And it becomes this kind of muddled mess where the dog is unable to come back mm -hmm. to stability. And that's yeah. where I come in and I help uh, help you get the dog back to stability uh, as best we can. She won't be a normal dog, yeah. so to speak, mm -hmm. but she'll learn how to regulate herself better. But yeah. then you'll also have the tools to properly de-escalate her. Yeah. Okay? For sure. Uh, anything else about Sophia that I should know about? No, that's it. I think we've, we're at a place now where we've had to come to accept that she's like the dog that we're never going to be able to take to the dog park and, For sure. and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But we yeah. just want her to be safe and those around her to be safe. Yeah. For we, sure. al we always muzzle her in the building. We always just and that's why more protective for her than anyone else. Just Yeah. Unfortunately, her breed's going to work against her. Yeah, exactly. Is she, is she a pit yeah. or a pit mix? She's an she so she's actually a Staffordshire Terrier. We 100%. got her. Yeah. yeah. We got, we got the her, yeah. DNA okay. test and all that. For sure. So... Um, I've had this happen in the past. Like I had a client that had a Catahoula Bulldog mix. It looks like a spotted pit bull, like a leopard mm. pit bull. Very beautiful dog. Um, I trained her. Everything was good. She got a, 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 a new home out in the suburbs. And they were walking with her because she used to be dog reactive. And this kid was walking a uh, golden retriever. So a 12-year-old kid. The golden retriever was reactive. Mm. Broke from the kid. Attacked their dog. Mm. Their dog bit the dog in response, which makes sense, yeah. right? Mm. They pulled away. And then the family of the golden retriever uh, filed through the uh, alderman yeah. or some and shit blame or whatever. And blamed the breed. And everything actually got put on the bulldog uh, because of the breed. Yeah. Bullshit. And I was yeah. like, even though they're like, but our dog was on leash, minding their business, yeah. and this mm -hmm. dog broke and yep. they didn't care. Yeah. They just, it, it, it was stupid. We yeah. actually have one of those crazy ass golden retrievers in yeah. our building. In our building, yeah. Crazy. Like, this dog needs to be muzzled, and mm -hmm. it's not. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's the bad rep, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's an unfortunate reality. Um, so I, I'm well aware of, like, all yeah. that stuff. So the muzzle does help protect you and her. Yeah. Uh, liability, all that that's stuff. That's what, yeah, that's... Certain. How can we get her to stop trying to take it off? She literally makes herself bleed. Because she's, yeah, like... she's fighting it. Yeah. Um, did you ever try counter conditioning with food? No. Nope. No? No. That's the first thing that we do. Really? Okay, yes, okay. it's food. So I, I'm a big advocate for like a versus tools like the collar that you have and stuff like that uh, so the way i look at it is there are things that are natural and unnatural to dogs mm -hmm. that muzzle is unnatural mm -hmm. right she's not meant to wear that that's something right. that we've created of course for safety reasons mm -hmm. uh, so if she feels uncomfortable with it i understand why mm -hmm. plus she's technically more vulnerable because mm -hmm. her only form of self-defense is her mouth mm -hmm. right dogs bite so of course to protect to correct to play, to show affection, like they're very mouth-based. So the muzzle removes that option for her. So sometimes uh, those stress levels can be heightened because mm -hmm. the dog's aware of like, I'm more vulnerable because I can't fight back, mm -hmm. right? So we always do food first, okay? If you email Tina, she can send you a link. Uh, we have a web, uh, web page on my website, uh, like training FAQ. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a section that has muzzle conditioning videos. Okay. There's like three or four of them, one from me and then two or three others from other trainers. Okay. It's super simple. You show the muzzle, you give a treat, right? And you just keep repeating gotcha. or you can even feed the dog. Like I'll do a Ziploc bag punched into the muzzle pull out the uh, the, out the ceiling thing, right? So it kind of wraps inside. I'll put their meal in the, the bag so that the muzzle is holding it uh, and they have to eat from the muzzle. Mm, if they gotcha. don't eat from the muzzle, they don't eat, period. Uh -huh. I skip the meal and I do uh, it again. I gotcha. So eventually the dog's gonna go, the only time I see food is when that muzzle comes out and I'm gonna have to learn to deal with that muzzle because uh, it's against instinct to mm. uh, starve oneself to death. Mm. Okay, so sooner or later, I've had okay. dogs go as, as long as five to seven days without eating and then one day, all of a sudden, they're like, 
I'll take some, some food from that <laughs> muzzle now, okay? okay? It just comes down to the human mm. and how far they're willing to go. Yeah. A lot, like, people, again, they feel bad, emotions kick in. I'm like, yeah, a, again, a dog, at least, I guess it could happen, but should not starve themselves to death. Yeah. Like, it's literally against instinct. For sure. Okay. I like that idea. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, email Tina, Tina, she can send you a link to that stuff. I would okay. start that process right away. Okay. Um, because let's say you do that for two or three months and you're like, Jesse, she's still biting the muzzle. Mm -hmm. Then I go, it's okay. You did your homework. Mm -hmm. She just doesn't like the muzzle. Now we have to do it the hard way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can't make her like the muzzle, but we can definitely get her to stop fighting the muzzle mm -hmm. and learn mm -hmm. to just tolerate it. Yeah. Okay. And we do that through pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, so the reason why I commented on your collar here is um, this is, I'm not sure if there's a different name for it, but uh, obviously this is styled after like a prong collar, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm not a fan of these because of the teeth. Mm -hmm. I don't feel they give you an actual correctional bite as much as a standard, simple prong collar will, okay? Okay. Um, the other reason why I don't like this kind of collar for a dog like her is a lot of times you're not gonna override mental state. Okay. Okay, so like, let's say she's in her crate and she's anxious. You know you can correct that. Did you know that? No. The anxiety? Uh -huh. You can correct that, okay. okay? But this tool most likely is not gonna cut through because her anxiety levels are up here. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So if you think of this on a scale of one to 10, if you give your firmest correction, it's gonna cap at a 10, mm -hmm. right? So that's why we use the e-collar tool, mm -hmm. okay? So the e-collar tool, are you guys familiar with the technology? Yeah, we have one. Yes. We have one, yes. okay. She... Is it the orange remote? It is the or like yellow, the yellow, the yellow big yellow. remote. Yeah. Circle remote. Um, yeah, it was like 330 bucks, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so that tool can break through the anxiety mm -hmm. if it's the appropriate output mm -hmm. uh, and, I'll, in my opinion, the appropriate uh, make and model, okay? okay? I don't like the yellow remote, mm -hmm. okay? So when I first started training dogs uh, as a business in Chicago like 12, 14 years ago, uh, I used to use that brand. It's called E-Collar Technologies or Einstein. I think mm -hmm. is what it used to be. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trainers like them a lot because you can literally call them as a retailer and go, I need one collar and I need it shipped to this address. So I can have a collar overnight it to the client, mm -hmm. right? And I still make a profit, mm. okay? They, they do all of that. So I don't have to have an inventory, Yeah. okay? So trainers like it because it's um, less financial investment, okay. right? Uh, so I had three pitties, all human aggressive at the start of my career, coincidentally, mm -hmm. uh, and I had them all in that collar. They were all getting worse, mm. okay? And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I'm doing the same thing with these dogs I'm doing with every other dog. So I was like, let me try a different brand. So I used the brand that my mentor uses, which is Dog Doctra. I ended up paying out of pocket for all their collars because uh, the clients had paid the 300 some dollars for their for the collar. Other one. Yeah. And I go, here, we're gonna swap these out because it's the only thing that I can think of, think of that uh, is, is, in, is, is not working. They all got better. Oh wow! Okay. Why is that though? Isn't it just correction as far as the, um, the strength? The way the pressure is the, the, distributed is different. Mm -hmm. So if you feel them in comparison, mm -hmm. the circle collar, in my opinion, feels sharper, whereas the collar that we use feels duller. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like a, I, I don't know how to explain it. If you felt them side by side, you'll go, oh, I I, I can see what you're talking mm -hmm. about. Gotcha. Right. Mm -hmm. So in my uh, theory, the sharper sensation is what was making them more aggressive. Yeah. Because so I did well, everything the same. The yeah. only thing that I changed was let me swap out the tool and all of a sudden they start getting better, right? Yeah. And I felt them side by side. I'm like, that's the only thing I can think of is the fact that um, uh, one feels sharper and the other one just feels a bit more duller. I feel like that's why we kind of stopped using it because she was trained at found with that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she would yelp like it was just really harsh for her. Yeah, there's another thing too that goes with that. Um, I've trained many of their dogs. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see which one Not that everybody was. that uses e collar uses it correctly, mm. in my opinion. Okay, yeah. it tends to be used even like the prong collar tends to be used as a um, punisher. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you look at these tools, it makes sense, right? As a human, you go like, oh, that's meant to punish a behavior because of the way it looks, mm -hmm. right? But all these tools are actually meant as a line of communication. Yeah. It has to be conditioned correctly, though. Yeah. Okay. So one of the most common things that I'm having to do with with a previously trained e collar trained dog mm -hmm. is recondition them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. They have to understand the collar, how it turns on and how it turns off. Okay. So most commonly, what happens is uh, they're either shaping the behavior using food, right? So everything's food based, and they might do that for a week or two, mm -hmm. and then they go, you know, place. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Then they slap the e collar on, or they'll slap the prong collar on, and they go place, and the dog doesn't do it, and they go punish. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the problem for the dog is the dog goes, we went from everything's fun and games to now this bad thing happens, and I don't know why. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So we have to shape everything with the tool that we're using. So if you're using food, then yes, you're shaping with the food, right? Yeah. But then you can't use food as a punisher really because there's no nothing bad associated with food, right? Yeah. Like it, even if I withhold the food, the dog doesn't go like, man, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Like that's not a dog thing. That's a human mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Right? Growing up my if my mom said, Jesse, you didn't do your chores, you don't get an allowance this week, like I go, Oh, that sucks, right? Yeah. Dogs don't have that capacity. Right. Okay. For dogs, uh, a punisher or consequence is physicality, mm -hmm. right? So she's given uh, good incidents or, or, or uh, examples. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're coming into our personal space. I don't like it. Back off. Like mm -hmm. that's a correction, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's reinforcing a boundary that she doesn't want uh, whomever to, to, to enter. Yeah. Uh, so for when we use these tools, like the prong collar is a great tool. Remote collar is a great tool when it's conditioned correctly. Okay. okay. So the thing that I do is I come in and I go, all right, this dog. Uh, so one way I can tell um, is like if the dog, if we have a, a bed here and I tap on the button, right? Mm -hmm. I expect the dog to go to the dog bed. Okay. okay. You'd be surprised how often it happens where the owner will press the button and the dog runs away from the dog bed. Mm. Okay. So I go, I go, there's a proof the dog is not conditioned correctly. Right. Yeah. So then we fix it within the class, the dog, I tap without words, the dog now goes to the dog bed. Mm -hmm. So now we they have uh, what we call an understanding of pressure. How it does it turn on and how does it turn off? Right. Okay. So we, we teach the dog how pressure works. And then from there we can start correcting behaviors. Okay. okay. So let's say, uh, Sophia lunges, right? Obviously we don't want that. Uh, that's where the collar comes in. So when I press the button, if it's at the correct setting, uh, it'll stop the behavior and we should see the dog. If they're in this kind of state, mm -hmm. go into Retract, this yeah. kind of state to okay. go passive. Like right now, and she's relaxed a little bit, mm -hmm. but like her vigilance, yes. right? Cause you can see how she's Always. just kind of on scanning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We can correct that. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying is when you press the button, there's no reason to be vigilant. Yeah. Right. So the collar, the e-collar allows you to communicate with um, Sophia in a very natural, instinctual way that she understands, but it does have to be conditioned correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, questions on any of that stuff? No. 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 Um, what are your goals with Sophia? <laughs> well, start off by kind of just be a chill dog a little bit. Okay. Just kind of just let people, don't be so anxious all the time. Okay. Because it's kind of, it kind of hurts us see you're so anxious and there's nothing to be anxious about. Yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. Okay. I would say the same, decreasing her anxiety. Um, I would love to know how to help her do that. She's not on meds, right? No. Okay. No, I would give her like a doggy CBD oil, which okay does very little. Yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> oh, she I, does I, I have don't meds. I don't her coming with meds, but I was just no. double checking. Yeah, yeah. For vet appointments, we have to drug her up. They For gave, sure. yeah, they gave us special, <laughs> like gabapentin. She takes like four of this and three of this, so she's pretty drugged up when she goes to the vet. Yeah, I'm aware. I'm aware. Um, what else? That's about it. I, I think just decreasing anxiety, and I would love for us to feel like we're. Um, managing her better like I yeah I'm, just get her through this life a little better okay not to be so like what about like people coming over do you that, want her to be yeah that's part of the whole anxious that would be ideal well I don't about yes but I don't think we'll maybe we'll get to that point mm -hmm. but it's always gonna protect number one is protect her from people because people just oh it's a dog they want to come for better. sure yeah, yeah, like, yeah. no 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 just <clears throat> stay back and there's been several times when, where I'm walking her and people oh dog no stay back please like for sure even with the muzzle on? Even with the muzzle yeah. on, yeah, just, just stay back. Because you just, funny. you just never, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, and plus I, I it's not you. fair to her because she's like, she wants to sniff. She... And people just have no awareness. Like yeah. people that have, that are dog owners, they're crazy. It's mm -hmm. like. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I've been doing this for 15 years. I'm very I was, much I was telling, I was telling my wife, like there should be something with dogs. Like if you have a yellow ribbon on the collar or on the thing, something bright, don't approach the dogs. They do, they do, but people still ignore them. Mm. So you're just like, don't They're, approach the dog. You can put it on your leash yeah. and they'll say like, do not touch, not friendly, yeah. stuff like that. You yeah. know, even service dogs. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. Still, yes, people still even touch Even service them. dogs, yeah. yeah, people still do it. You know, it's just unfortunately, uh, when you, on social media, all those memes and stuff, and I enjoy them too, like they're funny, mm -hmm. but I, I look at them and I go, this is why people 
have problems with dogs, yeah. right? One of the problems that you're talking about, like people just encroaching on a dog's personal mm -hmm. space without asking and just bypassing things like that, right? right? But then also in the relationship with their own personal dog. Yeah. You know? So um, the reason why I ask what your goals are is um, our ceiling is fairly high. Okay. okay. It just comes down to how much work you're willing to put in, how much time you're willing to put in, okay. right? And then there's always reward versus risk, okay? Uh, the one thing that helps put you guys ahead of everybody else is that you already have a muzzle, okay? Mm -hmm. This is something that I, I sometimes struggle with the client mm -hmm. is their discomfort with muzzling their dog because yeah. mm -hmm. they feel bad. Or like, oh, but my dog looks mean, mm -hmm. right? I'm like, your dog fucking bites people. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You would be surprised. <laughs> You would be surprised. Like, okay. do you want your dog put down because she's yeah. biting people? <laughs> you would be surprised. Yeah. Okay. And I, I've had clients go, you know what? If you, if I require them to use a muzzle, mm -hmm. then they don't want to do the training. Like, they want they want a trainer that's going to tell them what they want to hear. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? And yeah. I go, that's not me because that's one my uh, reputation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Also, um, uh, that's liability. And then if something goes south first person you look at the blame to train me yeah okay yeah. so i always recommend for cases like sophia in person mm -hmm. okay you want to do the training yourself okay yeah. if this was purely dog to dog and she's fine with humans easier board and train whatever no problem mm -hmm. okay but when it comes to human related stuff because um you're gonna have her for at least so how old is she now she's gonna be six in december six hopefully another 10 years right hopefully, that's a long yeah. time um and I, and I also try to help like bring that to people's minds when they're dealing with aggressive dogs. So I'm like, you got to understand you're going to deal with this for another 10 years, mm -hmm. 15 years, whatever that is, right? No. Is when you understand how to handle a dog like Sophia, when you understand where she's coming from instinctually and all that stuff, you're better able to navigate life and you're better able to provide her with the life that you're wanting for her. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So like my facility, uh, we have all sorts of dogs, right? Uh, we got dogs that are worse than Sophia. Okay, I remember just, you telling me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So like. So like. Just to put it in perspective, right? We have one of those dogs with us right now, okay? yeah. and he's done great with us, mm -hmm. um, because I have an understanding of dog behavior, psychology, mm -hmm. the structure that we provide, and everything like that. The the discipline, the the remote call, all that stuff. All those pieces to the puzzle right. mm -hmm. are what allow us to carry or care for all these dogs. Okay. So then it's really just educating you guys so that you understand uh, her and, and what you can do. For okay? sure. For sure. So. Uh, the way I would break it down is the first two classes always have to be leash walking, okay? okay? Uh, the heel command. So mm -hmm. you see how you have her on a short leash here, mm -hmm. right? Is this also how you would walk her? No. It's more uh, looser? Yeah, okay. it would be like this. And then of course someone's approaching, then I kind of reel her in. I gotcha. Yeah. So like, let's say you're walking with Sophia and you have your leash nice and slack like that, right? Mm -hmm. Our expectation is Sophia is still at your side. Yeah. No pulling. Yeah. Um, I don't care if you're in a busy environment, not busy environment, in the city of Chicago, in the suburbs, yeah. whatever. Expectation is the leash is slack and she's there with you. Yep. Relaxed. Um, yeah. Off of one cue, okay, which is the heel cue. Mm -hmm. When we have that level of discipline, it changes a lot of things. So like the anxiety and the stress of the world, you'd be surprised how much better that gets with a properly trained heel, okay? okay? I, I know because people, again, they're focusing on the problem. When you get discipline and focus into the brain, it helps the dog navigate the world, okay? okay? So if we make you more important than everything else over here, her stress levels come down. Because mm -hmm. like right now, if you look at her, right, where's her attention on? Or everything else. Everything background. else, yeah. right? So to a degree, she could feel stress because she's like, at any point, those people could be a threat that person on the bench could be a threat, that dog over there can be a threat, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. That's what she's kind of evaluating. But as mm -hmm. long as they're over there, we're fine. But the moment it starts to come closer, yeah. now mm -hmm. the threat goes up, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Is if she's more focused on you, she has to bypass that yeah. and go, okay, I see it, I'm kind of worried about it, but I know if I break from you, consequence turns on and the mm -hmm. consequence is more meaningful or stressful than the environment mm -hmm. so she's stressing out more about you than she is the environment but not in a bad way yeah. mm -hmm. okay so growing up i was raised old school right mm -hmm. if my mom said wash the dishes i just washed the dishes mm -hmm. that that's just yep. how that was right because yep. mm -hmm. I, I i i knew what would happen if i didn't yeah mm -hmm. right but i also knew if i just did what mom said there'd be no conflict mm -hmm. there'd exactly. be no discipline right it's the same kind of psychology i go if i tell you to heal your only concern is walking with me, mm -hmm. nothing else, mm -hmm. right? So then, so then what happens is she's concerned about you, she bypasses this, 
But then she starts to realize, hey, the more that I've been concerned with you and kind of just, uh, uh, how do you say, ignoring this, nothing's yeah. happened. Yeah. There's been no negative experiences. Right. Yeah. And that's what helps the dog start to realize they don't have to be vigilant. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's say we do that. She's still vigilant. I go, okay, no problem. We already did the baseline. We did the foundational work. Now we're going to have to correct her directly for the vigilance. Because okay. for whatever reason, in her mind, uh, she's like, you know what? I know what you want me to do, but it's not important enough. I still want to do this instead. Mm -hmm. So then we have to correct to this decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have what we call direct and indirect approaches. Indirect is no. Mm -hmm. We uh, teach a behavior That's fine. and it indirectly fixes other behaviors. So like heel, like a lot of times, like, uh, you know, I get leash reactivity, leash pulling, leash reactivity, two most common things we deal with. Yeah. We do heel part one, class one, we come back week two, owners will say no reactivity. Uh, they'll say 80% uh, uh, less reactivity, 50% less, right? But there's going to be some kind of reduction, right? Okay. So for the ones where it's like literally 180, mm -hmm. they're like, holy crap, that was so fast. I go, right. I was like, that's the, that's the, um, the indirect approach. We taught the dog focus. We taught the dog uh, consequence. We taught the dog discipline. Yeah. And that helped fix the problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if it doesn't, then I go, oh, it's no problem. Now we have to correct directly yeah. for the decisions or behaviors that the dog is doing. But at least the dog understands why. Yeah. So yeah. she feels the consequence of the collar for being vigilant. She's going to tie it to, okay, they're disagreeing with me, scouting in the environment. So now I have to figure out another uh, uh, means of uh, existing in this environment that's not vigilance. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like you're doing the foundation first. Yes. Does that, do you find that that helps a majority of do dogs and the, the minority need that extra step of like? I would like... say 99% of dogs, uh, it benefits them. Mm -hmm. Okay. That 1% is that really crazy, like this dog, like this is a severe case. Yeah. Yeah. But they still benefit. Yeah, it's course. just not as drastic. Mm -hmm. as all the other dogs that I work with, For sure. you know, like I had a lady, her dog was like uh, uh, 30 pounds, small guy, little dog. I wish I would have recorded her consultation. I heard her coming from blocks away. No. Yeah. This dog was the worst reactive dog that I had for 20 in the year of 23. One of the worst dogs I've had in 15 years. Wow. Yes. Okay, it took me up until the fourth or fifth class to finally address the reactivity. Yeah. Uh, she ended up being on the high-powered collar, uh, meant for like a Roddy, a uh, maxed out to 127. Dang. That's how we corrected the behavior. He's like, it's like Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> it was bad, yeah. And her video, her name's Georgia. Okay. If you'd like, I can send you her. Her, I did a, I did a how do you say, uh, a breakdown of the case. Okay. It's like a 40, 30 minute, 45 minute video. Mm -hmm. If you want to see it. Okay. Um, to show you, because... The one thing I tell everybody is, I can only take you as far as you're willing to go. Yeah. Okay. So we have to understand. We have a dog there. Just a heads up. We have to understand that dogs bite each other, right? Mm -hmm. These tools will never slide your prong up just behind her brown the the strap. Yeah. See how it's falling. Oh yeah. 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 There you go. Excellent. Now you're gonna pull up, and you're gonna lightly press down on the hind quarters. Yep. Up on the prong, down on the hind quarters. Very good. Just like that. Um. Let me move her this way. Yeah, move a little bit away. <laughs> is, uh, now here, I'm keep relaxed but short on your leash. Now pull like this in front of you. Just direct her forward. Yep, like that. Now up and then down in the hindquarters. Tip. There you go. Very good. And then keep relaxed. Good. Okay. Um, Stay. I only take as far as you're willing to go. Okay. Um, In that particular case, the client just had faith and said, I'm going to do, do whatever Jesse tells me, right? But we always start low and we gradually work our way up, okay, until we find a solution. So for her, it took, her, took me four to five classes and finally one day I go, okay, we're going to get it done today. We're going to max out the collar and we're just going to correct every little thing at max power. Mm -hmm. She did that for two weeks and then we came back the following class. We, were, we met over there. There was dogs running off leash and stuff, not a peep. Wow. Okay. Because she, because logically it's hard. Yeah. The human goes, I have a 30 pound dog and a collar meant for a Rottweiler <laughs> and I'm correcting this dog at max power. Yeah. It doesn't compute for the human. Yeah. Right. But I go, it's not about the dog size. It's the intensity. Mm -hmm. Right. So you guys have heard the saying, um, it's not about the dog in the fight, but the fight in the dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Perfect example. Yeah. Right there. Right. So she just followed my instructions. And then that one day I go, you know what? And I already knew from the get go. 
but I have to do low to high just in case something lower would address the problem. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but then naturally. also for the human, they go, well, I already did all the everything else, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. now we're here. They don't feel that for sure. bad. Right? Yes. I, they the, don't feel the like, human oh, my would dog. probably accept that yeah. more. Yes, yes. <laughs> my poor dog. No, your dog. So the dog the for me is beast. easy because I'm desensitized. I've done this for 15 years. Yeah. I got like, this is a dog bite here. Right. Oh my gosh. This is, these are dog bites. I got a scar here from a rot rather bite. Scar oh, here. Wow. Another one over here. Jeez. Is when you've been bitten, and I never take it personally. Yeah. Like the rot rather bite, it was actually similar to Sophia. Mm -hmm. We were out uh, uh, on the lakefront. The dog was super reactive. Um, it was like it was a king rotty. It was a huge, massive dog. The owner, I could see the owner was panicking, mm. and I had a brain fart. I forgot that the dog. <laughs> was human aggressive because mm. I saw the owner and right. I was like here let me show you uh, and then right and I was like oh and then I saw the dog the dog looked at me and I jumped back and he lunged and it got me with his canine <laughs> um Man. you know but I was and the owner was like oh my god right and then he thought I was gonna sue him I'm like no I was like that's fine I was like that's my mistake uh Man. it's part of the part of the yeah. career choice right is that I'm gonna get bit no. Uh, but I never take it personally because I understand dogs don't do things for the sake of doing them. They yeah. do them for a reason, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Dog, like a human could just go, oh, I want to punch you, and they just punch. Yeah. Dogs don't do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a good thing. Yeah. So I have to work you guys, you know, uh, from the bottom up. So in case we end up in these kind of extreme scenarios, you go, I know why we're here. I've already tried everything else. This is the final step, and I'm hoping it's going to work. For sure. Okay. For sure. I've even had dogs where you had to put two collars on them. Okay. Yeah. But they were uh, almost all of them were 130, 150 pound dogs. Uh, yeah. And about five in my maybe, career. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, so the size. A lot of muscle. So you recommend like when I'm thinking the old school prong ones, like the ones where the prong, the teeth are kind of like sticking mm -hmm. out. Is that the one that you're Correct. saying yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's better? Yeah. You don't have to worry about it okay. because uh, what I would suggest is um, upgrading your collar, your remote collar. Okay. okay, is definitely upgrading that. This isn't going to matter. We bought because I'm curious. Now. If yours is the circle remote, I know for a fact it's the e-collar technologies. Yeah. Um, that was like the type of awareness I'm talking about. Yeah, like there's the camera, I I lady, dog I with a muzzle, and she's just like yeah, coming close. Like, what close. is your I issue, know. lady? I I <laughs> like, like, what's wrong with common sense? <laughs> should tell you, let's stay away from these people. Yeah, I know they're having a session of some kind. Uh, but yeah, with. Uh, this prong alone, I go, I don't like it. Okay. Right. But it, but if, you know, you're upgrading your, your actual training collar, the remote collar, everything else doesn't matter really anymore. A lot of my clients move past the prong collar. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah, leave so that buddy alone. Past the prong collar because of the remote collar. Okay. Okay. Uh, every case is different. Some clients like having them both just because th this gives them more immediacy. Because, okay. you know, in the city, you could turn a corner and then there's a person, mm -hmm. right? And those moments are the hardest to address. Mm -hmm. We can address them. They're just harder. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, uh, myself, like I would never recommend for a client. Okay. Um, you already have it. I'm not worried about you changing it out or anything like that. I was just kind of giving you Yeah, like insight. honestly, it does nothing to her. Yeah, I know. Like we've th yanked think, it hard I think, I think in, a, it does. in an emergency times, like when situation. I, when I pull it up like where it's supposed to go, like here, mm -hmm. it does help. Did they tell you how to um, correct her with that collar? No. No? Yeah. Uh, did they tell you how to correct using the other collar? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But they didn't show you anything with this. That's interesting. No. So, because um, this is meant to mimic a dog bite as well. You're meant to pop it. Mm -hmm. Where it creates this mm -hmm. kind of snapping kind of, motion. Just, just snap it like yeah. that. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but when you pop it like that, that doesn't do anything. It's literally like a... Like a, a side similar to, side. to that, yeah. Kind of like. And then you and an immediate release. So like, if you watch Caesar Milan, you guys remember Caesar? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Like he shows, like he's a really good like uh, example of how to correct uh, using these kinds of tools because he mm -hmm. does the quick little pop. Yeah. yeah. People tend to pop and hold. Like right there when you did it, you can see how she like you you moved her to the side because yeah. mm -hmm. that was more of a pull than it was a pop. But that's why mm -hmm. I don't do prong. Because it's too complicated. Yeah. Right? With the remote collar, I go, go to 80, press the button. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then whether I press it at 80, he presses it at 80, you press it at 80, it's just us, the same across the board. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So we got two on heel. The third class would most likely be pressure. Okay? Uh, by pressure, I mean social pressure. I'm going to come into your space. I'm going to come into her personal space. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, creating that threatening uh, uh, presence to her. Mm -hmm. And then see what she does. Okay? okay? Uh, if she acts out. No big deal. We're going to correct it. We're going to work her through it. If she doesn't act out, great, because that shows me the foundational work already kind of set up 
uh, a baseline for her mm -hmm. to not feel like, oh, you're coming into my space, you're a threat. Yeah. Okay. So I have another dog whose name is Willow. Did you guys ever see that picture I posted? It's a, it was a metal boat hook and it's broken in half. Yeah. That was Willow. I saw that. Okay. That was Willow. I haven't seen it. Okay. So, um, it was my first time taking her out because um, I was filling in for a staff member. Mm -hmm. And when I went into the kennel, she growled. And I'm like, that's a serious growl. Mm -hmm. So I went to go grab um, a boat hook, which is how we slip them. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, if we feel like they're not going to let us in. Mm -hmm. She grabbed it, broke it in half. So, and I could feel her power through. Wow. Like, her bite. Feel wow. it, yes. <laughs> so I had to go. And that's, uh, there was a separate picture I was putting on my bite suit. It was to grab that dog from the kennel. Okay. <laughs> did, he, did he end up? No, no, she didn't do a thing. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, we have to do it out of caution yeah. because it's For like sure. gambling with a dog like that. I'm like, I don't want to be stuck in the kennel with you. No. Uh, but he did the training afterwards, and it, I think it took us like seven to eight ish classes. Mm -hmm. And then finally, she got over everything, and then she's been great since. Nice. So, like, every time I'd go to take her out, she'd always have a problem with me. She was always fine with my staff. And then after we did the training, I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, because he came to pick her up, I brought her around. And, oh, she was great with me. I was like, for the first time ever. He was like, oh, awesome. I'm like, yeah. I was like, that shows, you know, that uh, everything's working as it should. Yeah. Okay. The but, only person that I saw her very sweet with and I saw videos was Elizabeth, was your wife. And I'm oh, like, yeah. I don't know how she did it, but <laughs> Sophia loved her. I, well, you know, people's energy, yeah. you know, yeah. so like a lot of dogs don't like me because my energy is just assertive. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's because that's because that's what I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. My staff can be assertive, but they're usually softer. Mm -hmm. Right. But me just instinctually and naturally with dogs, I'm just assertive. And that's why a lot of times they have issues with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, they'll get over it. Like they learn. What's it? Uh, <laughs> growing up it was like you don't need to like me but you need to respect me yeah, yeah. yeah. right they learned that because mm -hmm. i'm not a bad guy to them mm -hmm. yeah and i deal with them and they go okay they're like yeah your energy is assertive but mm -hmm. you're like, like you're not an asshole mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah you correct me but you correct me when i get out of line you're not doing it you know yeah. to me. you're not trying right. to hurt me yeah. exactly yeah. like dogs do understand that and that's mm -hmm. why that relationship is important um so yeah the two on the heel third one would be we visit pressure okay. start putting social pressure on her uh at that point uh pending like how she's doing with the muzzle and everything that's where I would tell you, if you want to get her out of her shell, you have to expose her to people. Okay. Yeah. Right? And I'm not, I don't care about these people. Yeah. Friends that would come Friends, over. Family. Yeah. Family that would come over. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That's, okay? what we, that's something else we'd like. And if I she know comes that. Over, we, yeah. we can have people over. Yes. You know? So. And I was going to say, like, I know we've developed also, we're just as anxious as she is now. Oh, for sure. So we're yeah. just as bad because of, like, we're just, ooh, trying to, like, loop, yeah. 100%. Yeah. So what happens is you start to see progress. You start to feel more confident. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'm not going to bullshit you. It's not always smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things get really ugly. Mm -hmm. But I, that stuff I handle with you. Mm -hmm. And then I'll tell you, we got through it. You can continue to push. Or I'll yeah. tell you, we didn't get through it. We'll have to do this again another time. Yeah. Right. Um, and then it, it takes uh, time and repetition. So once I teach you like how to start socializing her, we most likely take a tangent and start doing more obedience stuff. Okay. okay? The obedience gives you control mm -hmm. so that if you're in a setting like this, you're like, I know my dog is under control. I don't have to worry about the environment. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. But then there's the behavioral stuff, which is to help her get over her social anxieties and all that. Help you guys the get dog over it as well. Leash. Yep, I see it. Um, to start exposing her to get her more comfortable yeah. with people. Okay. Because it's... Uh, if I just address the root problem or her behavior, that's one side of it. But if we never help her how to trust people, yeah. it's always going to be there. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. So you may find like, oh, we have like a handful of people she's great with now. She loves them, mm -hmm. right? You at least have that in the back of your mind. Like, okay, she's past these. It's, yeah. But if you have a new person she's never met coming with like a relative, then obviously yeah. you know to assume, okay, this is where the muzzle goes on or blah, blah, blah. We go through our exercises if we want to go through them yeah. because it's a completely new person. It's, like, it's just common I sense. know she's capable because when I saw her with Elizabeth, so I was like, she's capable. It's just. Yes, yeah, so you have to know <laughs> how to navigate her through that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so two on heel, third one, I'd already jump into pressure. Fourth one, depending how that goes, I'd uh, show you how to start introducing her to people correctly. Okay. okay? Fifth one, um, most likely stationary control. Uh, the place command that allow us to uh, give her another activity, at least with us, to be mm -hmm. able to have her more out in the presence of, of dogs and stuff. Yeah. Um, the next one would be, this one's trickier because you guys are in Highland Park, but how to have people come over correctly. 
Okay. Okay. If you always put her in the kennel, you're keeping her isolated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In that uh, space, she's never going to get over. Yeah. No. The um, uh, anxiety. Anxiety. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll have to figure that one out. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, would you want her to? Have, I always tell, say yes to recall, but is recall something you need her to do? When you say recall, come on, called. Yeah, that would be amazing. See, that'd, be, okay. that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. So the reason why I say this, like, with a dog like this, people are like, I never let this dog off leash, right? But once you get there, you're like, wow, right? My yeah. dog now has freedom. Yeah. And now, will she be out over there? Or no. Will she be over here? Could she be over here? Yeah, because this is isolated. Yeah. Oh, there's a person walking with their dog. Let me recall my dog. Yeah. Get her on the leash. Oh, they're gone. I can let my dog be free again. Okay. So, like, we're currently in an apartment. You know, we would eventually love to buy a house with a yard. Currently, we don't trust her. She can jump high as hell. Yes, I've seen. So really uh, we seen. currently, is it raining? Uh, currently, launching, yeah. she will, like, I, I wouldn't trust oh, her in a yard. It is raining, yeah. yeah. Um, but I would love to be able to do that one day <laughs> and, and, you know, be able yeah, to recall her. Yeah, that ability. Yeah. So when people ask, like, can my dog be off these trained because they're reactive or aggressive or whatever, I go, <laughs> every dog can be trained obedience-wise. Okay. okay. It's just where would we utilize that obedience, mm -hmm. right? So, like, I had a client... Um, uh, his dog was like twice the size of your dog. Like she, he was a pit, a massive mm -hmm. pit. Um, and he was like, oh, like, cause he felt guilty. He's like, Jesse, uh, I don't know if I should be doing this, but I've had my dog Roscoe off leash at the lakefront. Uh, is that okay? And I was like, well, what's the environment like? He's like, well, I picked these isolated, isolated spaces and I let them chase squirrels. And I was like, that's completely fine. I was like, you clearly have the confidence to allow your dog off leash now. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole intention behind it yeah. is that she can't have a life like, you know, the happiest go luckiest mm -hmm. friendly yeah. golden retriever can, but she can have a much better life because of the control that you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The more control you have, the more freedom you have is what I tell clients. We don't want to make robots. Yeah. Right. But if I, if the dog is chasing squirrels and I go, I need you to get over here, then the dog's going to respond. Yeah. And because I have that control, my dog can now just chase squirrels wherever yeah. I want to let them go. Right. That would yeah. be awesome. Okay. Uh, but yes, recall is another thing that we can cover. Um, anything else that you're wanting to cover yourself? I think just behavior, more control. Behavior, control. Decrease anxiety. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think once we decrease the anxiety, the lunging will stop and everything else yes. will come together. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it, being able to have her uh, around people, around children, possibly. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that, is that something like a Madassa? We in the don't future? even. Uh, yeah. Like, I mean, we don't have kids currently, but we've thought about, we've worried about, like, what, if we have a baby, yeah, how what, is she going to be? Yeah, like, you yeah, know? Yeah. So that's a whole separate thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I've dealt with it through, throughout the years. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way to predict how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. I had one case, one of the uh, worst, like, human aggressive cases I've had. It was a blue healer. Mm -hmm. um, bit three people by the age of six months and bit them seriously. Wow. Had two other trainers tell them, put the dog down. And then I came in and I was like, okay, this guy's an asshole, but we'll rein it in, right? Mm -hmm. Ended up having, uh, like a year later, year and a half later, ended up having their first kid. Dog absolutely adores the child. Because they called me. We had a phone call. We're like, uh-oh, right? I'm like, yeah. I know. We're scared, yeah. Right? Absolutely adores the child. <laughs> I've had clients with the golden retriever that loves everybody. Fucking hates the kid. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. So, again, great thing is she's muzzle conditioned, and that allows us... Uh, I, I hate the word gray area, but it does allow gray area because mm -hmm. you don't have to really worry like, okay, uh, I have this dangerous dog who's unmuzzled that can go after my kid anytime. Yeah, That's sure. where control kicks into play, education, understanding her behavior, your muzzle. Mm -hmm. All these tools allow you to keep your dog and have your family as safely as possible. Mm -hmm. The dog that we have here, early, uh, Buddy that I mentioned, I trained him like 12 years ago. Uh, the, they have two kids now, I think. Um, and when they asked me about Buddy and them, I said I would never let Buddy with the kids, period. Mm. Right? No questions asked. Whenever he's out and the kids are out, muzzled up, guaranteed e-collar, guaranteed for mm -hmm. fact, always. Yeah. And they just heeded my word. No incidents, thankfully. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's like 14 now. Um, but he's a dog that if he didn't have them as his owners, like he would have been put down for sure. Mm. Yeah. Because they were willing to take... To work with them. Yeah. 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 And, and it, invest and, the time and, invest, and money. Yeah. But also heed what I said mm -hmm. a lot of people don't like my kids will never pet my dog 
And I go, but is it really worth your dog biting your kid yeah. just to so they can pet them? Yeah, they can sure. pet another dog. Like who yeah. cares? You yeah, know? yeah. But these are, and I, you know, you guys might go like, that sounds so crazy. I say this because I've come across it. Yeah. You know, again, it's not the dog that's really holding themselves back. It's the human, and yeah. how they feel about the yeah. tools and the things and the rules that I put in place. There's certain dogs where I go, always muzzled when they're out with people. There's yeah. certain dogs where I go, if you feel good. I'm good with you having the dog a muzzle. You know, it really just comes down to the client and their better judgment. Yeah. Uh, and in worst case scenario, I tell them, like, let's say for Sophia, we have a lot of things that we can do. Let's say kids come in the future, uh, usually through coexistence, the dog will learn to accept them as one of the family. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously never unsupervised. Mm -hmm. Like even our dogs with our, 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 our son, mm -hmm. yes. not uh, unsupervised ever. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's um, and I've been training dogs for 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then with, through coexistence, um, the dog ends up going, oh, like you've been here for two years. Yeah. Mm. And they you're end cool. Up, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. It's usually I the guess first, you're cool. The first two to three years are always awkward yeah. because they get used to the child, like the, the newborn, and then the newborn starts crawling. That usually causes mm -hmm. tension. Mm. Then they get over that. Then they start walking. Mm -hmm. Then that causes tension. Mm -hmm. And then at two years old, you got the screaming little kid running Grabbing. around. Yeah. That causes Grabbing tension. Stuff. Yeah. Yes. So there's a typical, there's an age where they start to kind of settle down. Mm -hmm. And by that point, they're the dog has accepted them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, but every case is different, but once we get there, you know, I'm always happy to help. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, maybe you're going to get to this. Is it kind of like once a week classes we're coming in for an Correct. hour? Yes. Okay. I know for you guys, it'd be a trek coming from your, we both from. still work in the city. Yeah. So, um, but it would be, trust me, the, the, the best of your investment to do it yourself. Cause you will learn so much more. Okay. Could it be where like, it would help if like she's in daycare that day and then we go like could that it's work better for you convenience wise like it's completely fine yeah but it doesn't matter when the training happens mm -hmm. um uh, uh it's whatever would work best for you guys okay probably be easiest if it's a day yeah. she's so in no it, boarding right? then right we're not doing the boarding thing oh no. the boarding train the boarding yeah thing. i wouldn't recommend it for no. you okay um one uh we may not see any behaviors Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of behaviors that, that I know Sophia has that, that, that we don't see, mm -hmm. right? Like dogs walking past for kennel and stuff, we get no reactivity. Okay. The only things I've seen from Sophia that I can name off the top of my head would be uh, the lunge attempts at the staff. The handoff. And then yeah. the, the handoff. And then uh, I've seen the jumping in the kennel mm -hmm. when she's unsettled, right? And now uh, we would all be on the same page mm -hmm. is that we can start correcting those things mm -hmm. and it keeps us, it keeps everything uniform. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes. For Which sure. helps the dog advance even more. Uh, yeah, and then uh, so I'd recommend in person. I would recommend at least nine. Mm -hmm. Twelve uh, would be best. Okay. okay. Um, if you did twelve, we get to ten classes, and like let's say you're like, wow, like she's great. We didn't think we'd get this far and stuff. Mm -hmm. You're always welcome to pocket a class for the future. Let's say when that child yeah. comes, you can even pocket both of them, or you can even convert them to credit and utilize that credit towards like a, a boarding okay. stay or whatever because it's a service for a service, so there's no issue there. Okay. Uh, at least nine, definite, uh, 12 uh, would be the best option. But what I do when I when I say like at least is if you came in and you just did nine, I really have to prioritize what I'm gonna cover Perfect. to make sure you get the most out of those nine classes, yeah. Yeah. right? Obviously when we're doing a longer program, we're still gonna prioritize, but now I go, okay, cool, I got more time to kind of maybe uh, touch on things later on that are important mm -hmm. or not urgent to what you're dealing with, mm -hmm. Yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, I've been doing this a very long time. Uh, when people ask like, oh, what's your, your guarantee and all that stuff? I go, as long as you do the homework mm -hmm. and you follow the instructions, we're gonna make a ton of progress, mm -hmm. okay? Um, any questions? Yeah. I guess, yeah. what is the right way to hand off? Or just to, you, just you would summarize. hand the, the, the handle first. So if you take your, your leash, yeah. okay, uh, completely slack, uh, I'm gonna have you grab the handle with the right hand. You're gonna grab the leash here shorter with the left hand. You're gonna yeah. pivot around to your right and then circle towards me, right? So like that, you're gonna hold right there. Mm -hmm. You hand the leash first, okay? And then the staff would go like this and then walk away. Okay. This is the problem, because I'm coming into personal space and I'm reaching towards you. Okay. That seems threatening. When we do it this way, we're taking away what we call confrontational pressure. Mm. This is confrontation. Yeah. This is confrontation, mm -hmm. right? So when we do it like this, it allows us to grab the leash and already kind of grab here and walk forward, which avoids yeah. the, um, the head on, the, like, the head on. Yeah. yeah. And staff like Corey's my younger brother. He's been with me for, for a Aww, long time. Cool. Um, 
and in the, he's a very much a person that's on go. Mm -hmm. He's a great employee. He's a great worker, but he forgoes things sometimes. Mm. And so, like when I watch stuff, I tell him like, you got to remember, you got to you know do it this way, whatever. He's like, yeah, he's like, it's because somebody called and this and that, right? I remember Corey came up to our car. Yes. That's a, yeah. That's another. And yeah. feel free to tell the staff, take a step back. Yeah. They're not going mean, to take a first. I wouldn't like, even have thought of that. Yes. to tell you the truth <laughs> but yes. i do remember because you want to think if sophia's in the vehicle this is the door this is you and then you see someone she sees someone coming behind you that's threatening yeah right so if you look at that as like oh she's protecting me yeah it's no longer a bad mm -hmm. thing it's just bad because it's my staff member yeah. yeah right but if it was a person of ill intent you'd be like you're getting a stake when you come yeah. when you get home right? yeah <laughs> it's it's context yeah so like um, there was a video that was going around of a, a, a dog sitter that the dogs attacked her and they ate her face. Oh my God, yeah. Uh, I heard, heard about, about that, no. yep. Yeah, it's very bad. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Every, all the comments, oh, the owners trained the dog to do that, blah, 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 blah. There was another video of a dog, uh, dogs attacking and killing a burglar and everybody was like, give that dog a treat. Mm, good dog, Good boy, right? yeah. Same exact thing, different context, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So that perception. Yeah. So that's why I come in and I have to clear the the way we look at things and then you know it sucks that it happened but i go it makes sense that's why i don't take it personally yeah right and sure. i told the staff like you know the dog wasn't trying to go after you but you have to understand when you did this the dog felt threatened yeah. and now they're trying to protect themselves and their owner okay yeah, sure. so yeah. tina uh that was my next client we'll get in touch with you okay, okay. um if and it'll be like a package is it kind of like a package correct, situation correct. okay perfect. uh we don't prorate so if you did nine and wanted to add three you would have to purchase another three at, the, at that price so it's mm -hmm. more okay. expensive if you do it up front it's cheaper per class yeah and then once we get far enough along perfect. i'll tell you like things are clear now uh you don't have to do daycare once mm -hmm. a week anymore uh and then also at a certain point we might start start spacing out classes because okay. you need time to practice okay, okay. Makes sense. uh and then at the end if you're like we're going to pocket some or we're going to turn one or two into credit or whatever because, mm -hmm. you know, she's doing good and all that stuff. Not a problem. We've done it in the past. No issue there. Okay. okay. So you're awesome. not going to lose out on your investment or anything like that. Thank you so okay. much, Jesse. Okay. Uh, but she'll fill you in on uh, uh, all the pricing stuff. And then uh, if you have any questions you forgot to ask, just shoot her an email. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get back to you. Well, okay? Sounds good. Awesome, guys. It was Thank good you, seeing Jesse. you. Thank, Thank you, Jesse. Thank you so much. Time. Thank and you. then I'll grab your mic before you head out. Oh, <laughs> I can't Don't worry. You would have been the first Walk grade. away with that. Thank you. Take care.